lecture number three. In our previous slide, we have already uh, explained the function and the components of the intelligent transportation system. Just to give you the brief idea, ITS is the set of instruction which contains the application of four important component. The first one is sensing. The second one is analysis. And third one is control and then communicate. OK, so it's the set of those four important parameters. Uh, why the use of or the application of ITS is important because ITS include a wide range of application which process and share the information for the purpose to ease the congestion. Improve traffic condition. Also minimize the environmental impact as well. That could be used for the transportation of the freight as well as of the commercial and the passenger as well. In our previous session, we had already covered the pattern ITS configuration and ITS onboard and uh, outboard system and the communication as well. So in the today's session, we will try to cover those three important topic, positioning, mapping and sensing. OK. <clears throat> but before to go in a detail, I would like to explain that what is the importance of this figure or how you can understand that. So as you can see here, we have that uh, specific scale is drawn on the uh, X axis. So we have the reliability of the uh, communication on my right hand side. The uh, reliability is highly important. While on the left hand side, it's a loop. It's like uh, less important. So here I will just draw the one marginal line between that so that you can understand the importance that which information we actually required in how much time. It This uh, left hand side, you can see here, <clears throat> starting from the point zero. So it's starting from the one second, 100 millisecond, and then 20 millisecond and then 10 second and then one minute and then one hour. All those information which are related to the uh, such as like response time, reliability or the requirement for the communication uh, which are especially related to the safety or, with, or through which we can assess the driving in process. OK, so those are highly important for example example, how we can prevent the collision, what is the crossing accident provision and curve where that specific accident happens and the accident prevention in the merging section. So all those information we have, we actually required within one or less than one second. OK, so like you can imagine between 20 millisecond to one second. But all those information which which are related to like real traffic uh, forecast or through which we can determine, for example, how we can uh, uh, the uh, derive the speed operation vehicle to vehicle communication. Of course, it's important, but not that much important because here we have the direct human risk is involved and here we have the the management uh, which you can call forecast is involved. So all those information, for example, the speed, uh, traveling time, uh, uh, the uh, vehicle to vehicle communication and to determine the uh, platoon traffic jam and so on. So those information are required where the specific vehicle stopped, uh, etc. OK. So those information are of course required because without that the function may not work, but 
its time is from one hour from one second to one hour so it's it's okay if we receive those information after one hour as well but when we talk about the human risk environment where we have collision between any two vehicles or uh, between any two uh, persons so that specific information we needed in a less than one second time so the very important parameter of positioning, okay? So here you can see here, positioning. What is positioning basically? Positioning is the system through which we determine the location of any individual, if it's a car, if it's an ambulance, if it's a tricycle, if it's a rickshaw, if it's a truck, for example, anything. So, <clears throat> So through that specific system, we can determine the critical position of any individual vehicle to, for the purpose. What is its purpose? So its purpose is that how we can improve efficiency. For example, if I would like to give example of the uh, autonomous vehicle or which we call the uh, driverless vehicles. So those marginal lines or the border lines are actually uh, dedicated or uh, read by its internal memory system. So it makes sure that the same vehicle should move within that specific lane and it did not cross. So it provide its the, the specific information. So now we have two type of object. For example, if, I, if uh, this is the, the uh, median line, <clears throat> which is which looks like the uh, concrete separator. So like both lanes are divided through the uh, concrete separator. So it actually uh, detect that specific object and that memory system, that smart system, that IT system will make sure that that specific vehicle did not cross that border line. In the same is well here as well. Okay. So now. In the transportation system, so for example, if we would like to understand the content or the uh, or the the importance of positioning system, we cannot forget the GPS system as well, global positioning system. Okay, and through GPS, we can determine its location uh, in terms to uh, to implement or emerge the technologies. Uh, or we can also track that specific vehicle through its cellular, through its mobile phone as well. So if we look to the role of positioning or the or the whole architecture which is installed here, okay. So the suitability of the various positioning system is quite specific because we would like that the that specific position uh, should play a very unique uh, role to understand the high level of uh, conceptualization or the operation of the positioning system. Uh, as well as through that specific position system for the ITS, it is also important that the source for positioning system we are the expert who need to gain the better idea of the ITS that where the specific vehicle is moving. And through that system, we can also uh, determine if someone is, for example, moving in the zigzag path as well, if he violates traffic, for example, here and there. Okay. Now to understand the role or the location based technologies in the ITS, is before we uh, discuss about vehicle to vehicle communication. Today I will try to explain that what is the role of the 5G and 6G in the ITS, what is CITS, and we will also try to. So, we before we only talk about vehicle to vehicle, so today we will try to understand vehicle to other objects as well. Okay, so intelligent transportation system or the uh, if we would like to launch the driverless system or the 
uh, automatic vehicle system, it may not work without the GNSS. What is GNSS? Global Navigation Satellite System. Okay. It's very much important because the navigation system uh, around the world, which is uh, monitored and controlled from the satellite, will be unique and almost same everywhere. So 5G deliver the new enhanced positioning accuracy in meters to decimeter and to centimeter which required, so for example, in a very simple words, in terms of a speed through 5G, we can receive the information in like one second, for example, but through 6G network, we can determine the same information in, in for example, 200 milliseconds. So you can imagine that in the 6G network and the more it's developing, for example, 7G and 8G, and of course the the future generation, which which is called FG. So the more it will go, the accuracy will be increasing with passage of time, and which will and which will help the intelligent transportation system planner and designer, so that they can operate and provide the vehicular information and the. Uh, and also the, uh, the, the same system will also work effectively and efficiently. So now the next term is CITS. What is CITS? So CITS is basically the Cooperative Intelligent Transportation System, okay? So Cooperative ITS or CITS is the vehicular to everything. Which, which we also mentioned V2X as well. It is one of the most enabling technology for the driverless system to improve the road safety, as I already mentioned. As you can see here in that specific figure, so that specific figure is determined from the radar, which uh, identify those objects in terms of a load, that how much per, uh, per wheel load we have, how many load of that specific car. Okay, so it's it's actually defined each and everything in terms of a length, in terms of a height, as well as in terms of a width as well. The same goes with everyone. Okay, for example, here, 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 and here. So the important role in location of the of the base technology which play the role or which is quite in the demanding uh, in the ITS. So this is the global positioning system along with the 5G and 6G uh, implementation in the sector of ITS as well as the cooperative ITS system as well. So again, it's moving on. Okay? What is its accuracy? It doesn't mean that it only use in road or air or waterways. ITS is actually for all modes. Wherever we have the moving objects, it could be vehicle, it could be road, it could be airplane, it could be ships and so on. But its main application is in the road system because road is the uh, the the structure which is defined where the individual vehicle move within the boundary. So if it's moved within the boundary, so they have very limited space. So that's why its main application are in the roadways. Uh, despite of the of that specific low cost, location identification technology, which is for example, we can use or position even in our cell phone without paying anything. So we just uh, switch it on and uh, the same could be used. So like uh, now it's a bit more upgraded. Uh, so when we have the GPS global positioning system, but nowadays we use the GNSS as well. 
global navigation satellite system as well, which is again connected through GPS. OK, or you can also call that the HC, the kind of a more defined or the revised version of the GPS. OK. So it's also used in terms of location uh, of the uh, aeroplane for the ground to air communication, which usually make from the uh, from the ATC air traffic control. OK. And the same also use in the waterways as well, because waterways cannot move without navigation system. And uh, in a very short words, the ITS is basically for all modes. Without ITS, we cannot achieve the identification technology either in the, in the vehicle, in the air, in the railways, or in the waterways. So it's actually uh, provide extra capability, more accurate information about the location if there is any surrounded obstacle as well. OK. That is the one map which you need to understand, uh, which is actually copy from the from the Japan next generation digital road uh, information and that report was published in 2009. So for example, if you would like to build a system where you want to put the where you want to make it digitalized. So for example, first of all, in terms of the road provision information, we actually uh, required speed information, traffic, lane, sign, and then traffic uh, information, and then road surface information, and then zone, and then weather. Among that speed, we need actually the speed limitation or regulation. Safe speed means allowable speed, and then congestion, OK? It's safe, curve. And then if we try to understand regulation information, what is the uh, stopping section? What is one way lane? And then what is the driving lane? Similarly, all those modes information are defined in each section. For example, if we want to provide information on the ground, on the uh, surface, so we actually needed surrounding vehicle information in the intersection information as well. And then how we can control vehicles. So this is completely controlled with the with the uh, vehicle or the uh, or any individual mode control. And then we have the mobility support that which type of a mobility we are trying to focus it on. OK. So if you try to understand the the location information that how much it is important uh, and for example, if you ever use GPS, so it always give us the do you want to share plus or minus 10 meter exact location? If you say yes, so that is basically the main requirement. So that information is required in the route. So this is uh, related or relation is with the origin to the destination. And then plus minus one meter information is actually required when we want to change any lane or for example, if this is a straight network and we would like to take something like that, like uh, diversion or we would like to change the lane or we would like to change the curve as well. For example, if that one is going from A to B and that curve is going to D, so if we are going to take that specific one, so the GPS will actually tell us that we are about to change our location. For example, if our, uh, our installed location is from A to B, so it will give us directly alert sign that you are changing your land. So in a simple word, uh, in the within the inbound and outbound traps, it will give us alert sign at the plus minus one meter. OK, and then of course, if it's come to the uh, to the uh, vehicle to vehicle, uh, vehicle to any object and then uh, vehicle control and then the safe braking system, which we call ABS as well, automatic 
break, uh, breaking system, it will always give us alert within 0.1 meter because it's very much important. Here we are trying to define the, the collision between two vehicles. If we try to understand its accuracy, so global navigation system accuracy is within these several meters because uh, there is a one concept. For example, if this is our satellite, okay, and this is Earth, and here we have object. So uh, all those information which is receiving from the Earth goes to the navigation and then again receive it, it will take a bit lake time. Okay, we call it lake time. Lake time means a few seconds where those information actually lost or, may, or might take to process it. Okay, and then if you try to understand the mobile base station, because mobile is the uh, individual device, which is of course smart and right system, but its information is not as accurate uh, is like the global navigation system. So it's accuracy reached to the several hundred meters. And if you try to understand RFID, RFID, I will give you the example in the uh, next slide. Its accuracy is quite high because it's uh, it work on the magnetic nail system and which actually detect through a specific sensor. If you put a small tag uh, at the uh, car front and the same receiver will uh, receive that specific take. So it usually work within several centimeter. And of course, if you if you try to understand wireless uh, system, its position is, is also quite reliable. But it only work within within this specific range. OK, so like for example, if wireless system are installed here, so it will only work in that specific. Uh, uh, that specific location or geography. So if we try to understand mapping, so this was about all about positioning. So now we try to understand mapping. Why mapping is important? Because without mapping, we might not be able to analyze the situation. So we usually use that specific tool uh, just to uh, to portray our idea in the very control system. So for example, if we try to understand mapping, so through mapping, we can have idea about the, the trap reporting, the uh, travel delays, not only delay, and again, delay studies like analysis for like uh, one year or maybe like quite some time, okay? And then AVL, which we call automatic vehicle location, AVL. And uh, the next one we have DRG, dynamic food guidance, uh, which actually based on the set type of a system or the recommendation based system through which we can predict the traffic condition based on the uh, received data. OK. And uh, after that, we can also provide the advanced traveler information as well. And uh, we can also plan a different experiment with GPS, with GIS, with ArcGIS, with Transcade GIS. OK, so then we can digitalize the road map that how it will look like. And then through GPS system, we actually receive it and uh, again give it to the to the any users. Uh, that specific information is. Uh, is elaborating the potential data which need to be assessed or how it actually assessed or how we actually receive. So here you can see here we have dynamic information which we usually receive in less than one second and then chassis dynamic info 
where we have we can receive that one in like one minute and then static info where we have the time of one hour and then one month. OK, so to obtain the potential data alone would not provide the location of any of any moving object from one place to another place. OK. A number of map data are required for the ITS to create such type of a four link system which we call base map. So base map consists of a road, network, number of lanes, capacity, connected network, intersections, stop line, side network, etc. As well as it will also tell us all the information that is landmark, warning, traffic, intersection, and so on. OK, so that map is called base map and that information is only possible if we receive the, the information in that specific set. OK, as I mentioned again and again, it's only a machine. It's the human where they put the algorithm to make it more efficient or intelligent. The machine cannot work intelligently unless and until you did not train it or give it a command in the intelligent way. OK. So now we have already covered different parts, so now we reach to the different sensors are which we call sensing technology. OK, that's why I instead of use sensing, I use I, I also call it sensor RFID. So like radio frequency identification, which actually that is RFID. Okay? It is RFID tag. So here it uh, that specific tag is comprised of the two component. One is tag and the second one is reader. Maybe on the national highways and motorways. You have observed that specific take, so if you install the take so you can enter and exit directly because the, the system will automatically read your uh, take system. And then second one, we have the inductive loop detection. That is the inductive loop. It actually work on the basis of wireless system where we have the loop detector at the entry and then loop detector at the exit. And that is our, our controlling system. And the inductive loop can be placed in any roadbed to detect the vehicle when they pass through that specific magnet, OK? So this is the entry point and that one is the exit point. So those sensor will also estimate speed, length, uh, vehicle to vehicle distance, etc. And then third one, we have the vehicle, video vehicle detection system. OK, that is basically vehicle video detection system that how we can detect different vehicles, so like how many people are uh, inside that car, the plate recognition system, which we call PNR. P and R, who is driving that specific vehicle, how many people are inside that. So all those uh, information could be received from the uh, video vehicle information system. OK, and then we have the Bluetooth detection. Bluetooth, maybe you all are aware of that specific technology. Bluetooth is the the uh, very accurate and inexpensive way of trans uh, of the uh, transmission of position or any type of information. Uh, <clears throat> all those people who have their smartphone, maybe they have somehow used that. OK, so that's why it's a uh, it's uh, it is called the uh, inexpensive and accurate. So like you can only select and you can only share those information which you want to share. OK. And then we have the radar detection. That is radar gun. Maybe some of you already observed or experienced that part at the at the national highway and motorway. So they usually use it for the is a speed gun to detect the 
uh, the the speed of any individual vehicles. OK, so at the one side, it measure traffic flow, how many uh, stop you have made standard vehicle detection purpose and and like so on. OK, and the uh, speed detection as well, and we can also determine and operate the low visibility issues as well through radar system. And then the last one, we have the information fusion from multiple modalities or multiple sources. So that specific data is sensing uh, technologies which can combine different uh, intelligent positioning sensor and for the purpose to determine the traffic state accurately and specifically. OK, and which can be shows in the uh, form of the image sensor data and so on. <clears throat> that is very much important. Uh, the sensing technology through which we can improve the uh, traffic efficiency. The relation between the speed and flow can be measured as follow. So the flow is zero either because there is no vehicle here. Or there are maybe too many vehicles. And so let me explain it a bit. So that specific chart is draw between speed. And flow. OK, speed and flow. VF is basically free. Flow speed. That is VC or which we call V cap as well. Which we call the optimal. Speed. Flow. For. Maximation. That is critical flow or which we call KJ as well. So KJ is basically the the gem or which we call K J or K cap, which actually mentioned uh, that specific flow, that specific chart gave us the information that where we have the maximum flow at the maximum speed. OK. So for example, in a simple word, if we have if uh, this is a the two lane road and it's one kilometer capacity is 80 vehicle. OK, at a speed of 120 kilometer per hour. So if. Different vehicles are operating in that specific lane and few of them are operating at 120, but the rest are operating at 70. So we might not reach to that capacity of the 80 vehicles because different vehicles will have different locations in position. And because of overspeeding, accelerating and decelerating, because it's it's uh, about 50 kilometer difference between highest peak and the lowest operating vehicle. So we might not able to uh, achieve that state of the 80 vehicle. So the uh, so in that specific session, we might have the total of 40 to 50 vehicles. So what will happen if we have the continuous traffic? So that platoon or that speed at the at the previous intersection will also reduce, so which will again affect that whole spot. Okay? So this is the way how we can improve the traffic efficiency. And then we have different kind of a sensing technologies through which we actually determine different uh, plate system, recognition system, accuracy system, folk system, as well as the uh, traffic flow as well. So here we have technologies and then we have uh, sensing technologies image processing technologies and then optical backend as well. Uh, uh, each and every technology have specific outline and then we have its disadvantage why it is not using and then journal remarks from the from the uh, Japan IT system as well.
this is just a case study so that you can. Uh, so we can determine the different speed of the traffic while using specific ultrasonic wave sensor, image processing, as well as the optical beacon. So we can determine travel time between any two points, and we can also uh, determine that how much OBS we want to accommodate and so on. So if